Yes, hi. Welcome to Lumi. In this video, we will introduce a new concept called the Taylor series. And we will also talk about the McLaren series. So let us start with a question. How can we approximate a function with polynomials? Assume that our function is f and the polynomial we're considering is p. The first idea that comes into our mind is using the tangent line for the approximation. So as we all know, the tangent line is the line that hits the graph on one point. So the tangent line would be a good approximation of a function f of x near a. And then we can say that we have the limit of f of x minus p of x over x minus a as x approaches a is equal to zero, where p of x is the tangent line of the function f of x. Now, if we use a second order polynomial to make an approximation of the function f of x, that will be better. A better approximation of f of x means that a second degree polynomial p n of x may satisfy a more strict condition, which is the case of f of x minus p of x over x minus a to the power of two as x approaches a, which in this case would also equal to zero. Using the same idea, we can now introduce the concept of Taylor polynomials and define it. The nth Taylor polynomial for the function f at a is a nth degree polynomial, which is a good approximation of the function f near a of order n, which satisfies the limit of f of x minus p n of x over x minus a to the power of n as x approaches a, which is equal to zero. This graph shows how different polynomials approximate the function f of x. So the function that we have at hand is y equals to e to the power of x. As you may see here, y equals to t1x is the first order of the polynomial or the first degree, which in this case is a linear line, as you will see here. The second one is y equals to t2x, which is the second order polynomial, right? That is approximating the function that we have at hand. And the third one is y equals to t3x, which is approximating the y equals to e to the power of x function, right? And the third order, or the degree of three, as you may see here. So in our first theorem, we let a be a real number and let f be a continuous function defined at near a and let n be a natural number. The nth Taylor polynomial for the function f at a is a polynomial pn of the smallest possible degree such that the limit of f of x minus pn of x over x minus a to the power of n as x approaches a is equal to zero. However, this formula is not enough. Before we make further discussions, let me introduce a notion. By definition, a function f is called c0 when f is continuous, c1 when the derivative of the function f exists and is continuous, c2 when f prime and the f double prime, so the first and the second derivative exist and are continuous. And we can go on, so on and so forth. And we get to c of n when the first derivative, the second derivative, and the nth derivative exist and are all continuous, right? And c infinity when all derivatives exist and are continuous. In our second theorem, we let a be a real number and let n be a natural number and let f be c n functions at a. Applying the Lapidus rule, we can conclude that from limit of f of x minus p n of x over x minus a to the power of n as x approaches a equal to zero, we can get f of a equals to p n of a. The first derivative of f of a is equal to the first derivative of p n of a. The second derivative of f of a is equal to the second derivative of p n of a, all the way to the nth derivative of f of a is equal to the nth derivative of p n of a, where p n is the nth Taylor polynomial for function f at a. Also, you know that a polynomial centered at a can be written as p n of x to be equal to c0 plus c1 x minus a plus c2 x minus a to the power of 2, all the way to cn x minus a to the power of n. 
and we can apply the second theorem to have our first definition, which is Taylor's polynomial. Let A be a real number, and let N be a natural number, and let F be C N functions at A. The nth Taylor polynomial for the function f at a is a polynomial p n of x, which is equal to f to the power of k of a over k factorial multiplied by x minus a to the power of k from k equal to 0 to n. As n tends to go to infinity, we can extend this definition, of course. Our second definition would be the Taylor series. Let a be a real number. And let f be c infinity functions at a. The Taylor series for the function f at a is the power series s of x, which is equal to f to the power of k of a over k factorial multiplied by x minus a to the power of k from k equals to 0 to infinity. Our third definition is Maclaurin series. It is a special case of Taylor series at a equals to zero. So in this case, we will have s of x equals to f to the power of k of zero over k factorial multiplied by x to the power of k from k equals to zero to infinity. In our fourth definition, we're going to talk about the analytic function, right? Where f is an analytic when f of x is equal to s of x. Here, we're going to discuss some results of analytical functions. First, that polynomials are analytic, some product, quotients, and composition of analytic functions are analytic, derivatives, antiderivatives of analytic functions are also analytic, the function f of x equals to e to the power of x is analytic at zero, the function g of x equals to sine of x is analytic at zero. So here in our first example, the question is asking us to find the Maclaurin series for f of x equals to e to the power of x. For all natural numbers k, f to the power of kx is equal to e of x, where f to the power of k of 0 is just equal to 1. So we can say s of x, which is equal to f to the power of k of 0 over k factorial multiplied by x to the power of k from k equal to 0 to infinity is equal to x to the power of k over k factorial from 0 to infinity, which is equal to 1 plus x plus 1 over 2 factorial times x squared plus 1 over 3 factorials plus x to the power of 3 plus all the way, so on and so forth. As you may recall, we just discussed the fact that the function f of x equals to e to the power of x is analytic at 0. So we can say e to the power of x is just equal to 1 plus x plus 1 over 2 factorial times x squared plus 1 over 3 factorial times x cubed plus all the way for all x's. That is all for our video today. Thank you guys for watching.